What is up, everybody? In this video, I'm going to talk about how I sync up audio and video in post-production. So let's say you record video from one source, such as this little compact camera, and then you record audio from a separate source. How do you combine them in post-production? I'm gonna show you how to do this three different ways. First, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Final Cut Pro, then I'm gonna show you Adobe Premiere, and then I'm gonna show you an old school way that you can do it if you're using iMovie or an older version of something that does not support internal syncing. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I will timestamp each of these, so if you just wanna skip ahead to the method of audio syncing, you are welcome to do that. If you're curious, I did a video on this, I guess about two weeks ago or so, and this is a little rig that I threw together out of parts around my studio. I call this the Sparrow Mach 1. And basically it started when I got my Sony RX105, which is the camera that's mounted on here now. And I absolutely love this camera. And I wanted to find a way that I could do run and gun shooting, but the problem that you have with a lot of compact cameras, and this is unfortunately very standard, the internal mics are what they are. They're just not great. And the bigger problem is that you do not have an audio input for an external microphone or really a way to mount it. So I wanted to figure a workaround for that, so I put this together. And if you're interested in putting together your own version of this, I will put a parts list in the show description. But basically it's a, I guess a flash bracket, even though it's just a flat bar. And there there are actually four connections on here for anything that connect via a tripod socket. And so in when I did that video, I could not remember where I got this, but this handle, I looked it up since. This is made by Calumet and is called, I believe, the mini pod. And it's just a desktop sized monopod is what it is. And so I use this as a handle. I took the top off of my monopod, but you can get these separately. It's from Manfrotto. And so it's got a quick release plate on it. And so what's cool about this is that the whole rig is modular so I can switch things in and out if I want. I can use different applications. I can take the handle off and quickly mount this to a tripod if I want to. And the microphones are still attached. I can actually use it on my stabilizer. Um, there's a lot of different uses for this. And so I've really been happy with it. You can also take the camera off of it and just do run and gun if you don't need the audio support. For audio, I started by using the Zoom H1, which I really like. It's a very affordable um, audio recorder that has built-in microphones. And they sound really good. They're condenser mics. They're not shotgun. So depending on the environment that you're recording in, they can be susceptible to outside noises and they're not as directional as what you get with a shotgun. The other problem I had on here, and just to answer a couple questions that I uh, had after talking about that, I was having issues with low end rumble and it was coming because it's just made out of plastic. It, it just is what it is. It's an inexpensive audio recorder. And the problem is, is when you mount it to something, the way acoustics work, anything that's going to rumble inside this rig will transfer into the body. And so there's really not enough isolation. And yes, I did try the low cut filter. It did not work. Um, I still had some rumbling issues and I tried the dead cat as well, which is a big furry thing like this that you can just put over these microphones and it just didn't get rid of it. So you may have better luck than I did on it, but I just couldn't get it to work. So I went and got this, which is a Rode Video Micro. And this is actually in addition to the RX105, I've been really impressed with this. It's not expensive. I have some of the more expensive roads that I use. I'm using one now, it's the Video Mic Pro. The Video Mic Pro is really impressive. It's not a powered mic like the other ones are, and it probably is not quite as strong in some areas, but the audio is really good on it. It's easy to work with, it's easy to EQ, and I'm gonna show you how I do some of that as well. But when you turn this on, you do have to hit record on the camera, then you have to hit record on the H1, and then you're going to record, and then you have to bring your files in into post-production and put them together, which is an extra step of work, but it's really not that difficult to do. So without further ado, let's dive into that. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how I sync audio and video in post-production. So we're going to start in Final Cut Pro and I've already set up a project here and I made a little sample clip that we could play with on the Sparrow Mach 1. So we have the video file on the left which is from the Sony RX105 and then the audio from the zoom recorder is on the right. So what we want to do is sync those two clips together and then turn off the audio on the video clip because we don't want the original audio, we want the better audio. So it couldn't be easier in Final Cut. What you're going to do is select both files and then what you're gonna do is right click and you're going to choose the third option which is synchronize clips. And then what's gonna do is come up with a contextual menu and you can label your new file. I'm gonna call it uh, sync 
And then what you're going to do is double check these tick boxes here. This is new in the new version of Final Cut and it'll save you a step. So we're gonna use audio for synchronization, which is fine. It's gonna sync the audio files together. And this second one's really important, disable audio components on AV clips. So when you say okay, it's going to analyze them and give you a third clip and this is now in sync. Now, if I select this and I look at the inspection panel here, make sure you have the audio tab selected. You're gonna see that down here, here's our storyline and here's connected. Storyline means it's the audio that came from the original video file and you can see that Final Cut automatically deselected it and we are listening to dialogue one, which is the connected file. So now when I drag and drop this onto the timeline, we can now play with it and you can see that there is a waveform down here. And typically I do all of my editing in Final Cut. I think that Adobe Premiere is an incredible application and it does a lot more, but I have not learned it yet. And so I tend to work in Final Cut because I'm fast at it and that's pretty much it. So what I will do um, to sweeten up the audio a little bit is I will type in compressor. Let's grab a compressor plug in and drag and drop. And then what I'm going to do is also add EQ. Here is another big time saver. Um, channel EQ. So when I select this clip, I'm going to go over to the inspection panel here and you're going to see here's our effects. They have been added. Here's the compressor. Here's the channel EQ. If I click on these little icons that look like calculators, it will open up the panel here for each one of them. These are the plug-in panels. Now you can go in and tweak these and get it sounding good. And then once it sounds good, what I do is I save presets and this is really handy. So here's Rode Video Micro and then I'm going to go grab the EQ and uh, do that one as well. And so this this is not something you can use probably all the time, but I record a lot in this room and the sound really does not change in my studio. So I will, having presets saves me a lot of time. Now, typically I will use these as a starting point for when I'm recording audio in a different environment. But anyway, that, that pretty much is all there is involved and now I'm ready to go. And the other thing I will probably do is go in here and because I record with a picture profile is go in here and play with my levels a little bit and get my video looking just a little better. Bring some saturation in, a little too much, and then grab some, and I'll spend more time on this than I'm doing with you guys right now. Warm up my highlights, and there we go. This is quick and dirty. This is a test clip for syncing up audio and video in post-production. I'm recording video from the Sony RX100 5, and I'm recording audio with a combination of the Rode Video Micro into the Zoom H1. And there you have it. That's how you do it in Final Cut Pro. Okay, so now we are in Adobe Premiere and I've gone ahead and set this up with our sample file. So we have our sample video clip, our audio that was recorded externally and I've created a sequence. So what you wanna do, select the audio and the video clip and then right click on either one of them and you're gonna say merge clips. And there is a box that comes up with a number of options. We're going to say select audio and then we are going to select the box that says remove audio from AV clip, just like in Final Cut. We're gonna say okay. It creates a new clip and now I can drag and drop this down onto my timeline and our audio and video are synced together. And there we go. And you can sweeten your audio from there. And finally, I'm going to show you how to sync clips in iMovie, which is a little more involved because there's no way of just having the software do it for you. There's no way of syncing the audio and the video. So what I have here, I have my video clip and my audio clip. And then when I recorded the video clip, I snapped at the beginning. You can also clap and I'll show you what I did here. It's real exciting, but uh, this is it. So let me play it. This is a second. Okay, so I snapped before I started. You can also clap. What you wanna do is create a spike in the waveform. So let me show you how you're gonna sync these. We're just gonna do it manually. So if I drag my video down to the timeline, I'm gonna drag the audio beneath it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And this audio was recorded a little bit quiet, but you can see down here that there is the snap on the audio waveform and here it is on the video. So what I want to do is just move the audio over a little bit to where they match. And now when I play it back, you should hear it synced up. This is a second example where I'm going to... Okay, so they're synced up, but you're still hearing the audio from the original video file. So what you want to do is select the video file on the timeline, right click, and you're going to say detach audio. And then it's going to put the audio file down here and make sure you're going to delete the right one here. Make sure it's labeled the same thing as your video file. I'm just going to hit delete. That's gone. And now my audio is synced up. This is a second example where I'm going to use a snap at the 
done. It just takes a couple extra steps. It's really not that difficult to do, but um, you do need to remember that if you do not have a way of auto syncing in the software that you are going to have to snap or something or clap or just create that spike. So it gives you something to sync to when you look at the waveforms. So that is basically it. Those are three different ways that you can sync audio using Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, and in manual old school method for things like iMovie. And if you want to put something like this together of your own, I'll give you a parts list in the show description. And I've really been happy with this and I like the fact that it's modular and there's a lot of adaptation that I can do and it gives me more flexibility with the Sony RX105 or any point and shoot. If I want to film on one of my Canons, I can throw these on here too and you just get better audio as you go. So anyway, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and let me know. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest things that we do here. And until the next video, I will catch you guys then. Later.